Hi, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections, and today I'm covering poor water flow at old houses caused by old water supply pipes. So why am I being so specific with this particular topic? It's because poor water flow is a large topic. There's a lot of potential reasons for poor water flow inside of a home. I can't make this video about all the potential causes. I will touch on them though really quickly at the beginning here. If you've got poor water flow in your home, check to see is it at one location or is it all over your home. If it's simply at one location, the first thing I do is check the aerator at the faucet. Sometimes you unscrew those aerators and you'll find just all kinds of crazy sediment behind it. Another is if it's at one particular fixture, check to make sure that the valves are open all the way underneath your faucet. If it's throughout the entire home, one of the most obvious things to check is are the valves completely open? Trace down your water main, figure out where the water comes into your house and look at the water valves. Check to make sure both of them are open. You're typically going to have a water valve before the meter and after the meter. As I'm showing in the video here, one of the valves isn't completely open, so I open it up all the way. Another potential reason for poor water flow throughout the entire home is an issue with your water softener. You can kind of trace this one down by going to your water softener and flipping it over to bypass mode where the water doesn't need to travel through the softener to get to everything else. If putting it into bypass mode increases your water flow everywhere, well, you've narrowed down your issue. Another issue is poor water distribution piping throughout the inside of the home. And I'm being careful with the way I'm describing it. I'm saying water distribution piping. That's a very specific term. It's not the same thing as supply piping. Water supply piping is the water main that comes into your home from, well, if you're on a municipal water supply, if you're getting water from the city, it's what goes from your house to the city main. And sometimes that city main is gonna be on the same side of the street as you. Other times it will be across the street. You can know where it's located by looking for fire hydrants. If the fire hydrants are across the street, your water main is on the other side of the road. So if th that is the water supply pipe, what goes out to the city main. Water distribution pipes are those pipes throughout the inside of your home. And if those things are galvanized steel, and galvanized steel, as I mentioned in my timeline for old houses, galvanized steel was used primarily before about 1960. If you have a home built after then, you almost surely will not have that in your house. If you have a house built from about 1950 on, you might not have it in your house. Pre-1950, that's about all that was used throughout the interior of homes. So galvanized steel corrodes on the inside. The diameter gets smaller and smaller over time to the point where you just, you get very, very poor water flow at your fixtures. And the fix for that condition is to replace the galvanized steel water pipes. So that's, that's the distribution piping inside the home. But really today I'm focusing on the water supply pipe. When you have an issue with that, it's expensive. It's a big deal because you need to replace that piping all the way out to the city main. And that's going to be the responsibility of the homeowner. Now in different parts of the country, maybe it changes, but here in Minnesota, that's how it works. The homeowner pays for that. And there's two types of material that we find a lot of problems with. One is with galvanized steel. Just like I discussed for interior distribution pipes, galvanized steel corrodes on the inside. Diameter gets smaller and smaller to the point where you got really poor water flow. And to know if you have galvanized steel, you need to trace down that water main right where it comes in your home and look at the water pipe in as it comes up out of the floor. If there's threads at that first fitting, it's, it's galvanized steel. I can't think of any other, any other water line materials that are gonna have threaded fittings. The other potential is that you have a lead water main. Now, I'm not gonna get into all the concerns with a lead water main related to lead getting into your water and health issues. I'll let you go somewhere else. I am not an expert on lead in water. I know that there are concerns over this, that's as much as I'm gonna say, but today my focus is on water 
flow at all of your fixtures. Now, lead doesn't corrode on the inside like other materials, so you're not going to get a gradual reduction in diameter, but what can happen with this material is it's a much softer metal, and if that stuff gets bent or crushed, you can, you can have a severe reduction in water flow. And I've seen this happen at many homes with old lead water lines. Now, in Minneapolis, they were using lead or galvanized steel up until 1928. There was a transition period between about 28 and 1932 where they switched over to using copper. If you have a Minneapolis home built after 1932, it's pretty much a guarantee that you'll have a copper water main. Or if it's a really new main, you might even have plastic. But the most, most Minneapolis homes built after 32 are gonna have copper. Now in St. Paul, there was a more clearly defined transition period. They were using galvanized steel or lead up until 1925, and then starting, uh, I'd say about 1926, everything after that would have been copper. So if, if you have a home built in these ages, those are, some, those are some times that you could remember. And if you want to know what type of water main you have, now I can't speak for St. Paul because I don't do as many inspections there, but for Minneapolis, their waterworks department keeps very close records of what people have in their homes for the water main coming in. And I, I know this because I've had situations during home inspections where I encountered really poor water flow throughout the home and I didn't have any of those symptoms that I just listed at the beginning of this video to explain the poor water flow. So I ended up calling up the waterworks department in Minneapolis and saying, hey, Ruben here, I'm a home inspector, I got poor water flow. I'm wondering, can you guys make sure that the water is on all the way at the curb stop? Now, side note, the curb stop, that's this thing that shuts off the water to the city main for your individual home. Every home is gonna have a curb stop. They, they call it that because the shutoff is located kinda close to the curb. Now, in some homes, it's gonna be, it's gonna be right in the middle of the public walkway. Sometimes it'll be in the driveway, sometimes it'll be in the lawn. At my home, it's in the driveway. You can see in this little clip here, I'm taking a screwdriver and I'm just popping the cover off of it to show you what that looks like underneath the cover. And then there's also a, a special nut. It's a, it's a five-sided nut. I don't even know what you call that. A, I'll call it a penta nut. I just came up with that. And you need a special tool that goes on there to, to remove the cover. And then once, once you get this cover off, I won't bore you with all those details, but once I got that cover off, you would need a long wrench that goes down below the frost line that accesses that city shutoff, and you could actually shut the water off to the house right there. That's called your curb stop. So back to the city of Minneapolis. I called the city saying, hey, why is there such poor water flow? Maybe you guys didn't open it all the way at the curb stop. Can you check it? And I had somebody who said, well, let me pull up the records for that home. They pulled up the records. Turns out that maybe 30 years ago, the previous homeowner had replaced the water supply piping from inside their home all the way out to the curb stop. And then they stopped there. They didn't replace anything else. So it was original water piping from the curb stop all the way out to the city main. So what does that mean? Well, it, this home was built before, you know, it was built in the 20s or whatever when they were still using exclusively galvanized steel or lead. And it means they had a really old water pipe that severely reduced water flow in the home. And the fix for this condition is to dig up the street. Who pays for that? The homeowner does. Now, the, the city will barricade the street off and they'll tear it all up, but the homeowner gets to pay for it. That's the important part. So somebody had already paid to do the really easy part, digging up their own yard. The, the bad part is that they still needed to go across the street. So that, that was very telling, and I remember that now. Anytime I'm looking at water supply piping and all I see is good stuff, I keep in mind that I don't know what's going out all the way to the street. So if you wanna know if you have an issue with your water supply piping coming into the home, one little trick I've found is to open a fixture quickly, and preferably a high flow fixture, like a laundry faucet with half inch pipes going right into the faucet or a garden hose faucet. Those, those typically have three quarter inch water lines coming to them. 
open that up all the way really quickly. And if you have a problem with the water supply piping coming into your home, the pressure is going to be fine. I mean, the pressure is whatever the city gives you. You don't have any control over the pressure, but you'll get a severe reduction in flow right after you open it. Now, at first, when we open it, water shoots out because if it's 60 PSI from the city, it's 60 PSI at that fixture, but it can't maintain that flow. So in each one of these examples, I'm opening the fixture very quickly and then you see the water drops down. That is a great test to do. And that, that tells me right there that we have an issue with the city main. And here's what it looks like at a kitchen faucet. We'll see this in slow motion here where I open up the faucet and you can see it, it shoots out kind of quickly, but it can't maintain that flow. Again, same thing. We got an issue with the water main here. It's probably going to be an expensive fix. As a home inspector, I don't get into diagnosing exactly what this is. I mean, there might be more than one thing that's causing this. As a home inspector, my recommendation is get a plumber out, have them figure out what's causing this and fix it. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate it. Take care.